Okay, guys, so <clears throat> this is paper one from last year's externals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, right, okay. So, okay, so this would be where the multiple choice answers are filled in. And now we come to the questions. Okay. I have already written in the answers. These are the ones that are given by QCAA. Uh, I don't show the marks for each, but you can get that from the, the QCAA website if you want to know that. The purpose of this is just to show you how to answer these questions and explain anything that uh, is necessary. So we have a reversible system, which in equilibrium, CO and O2 given CO2. Apply collision theory. There's something you probably did in unit one or two to explain how increasing the concentration of O2 at equilibrium will affect the concentration of CO2. <clears throat> Excuse me, if the temperature and volume are held constant. Okay, so if you increase the concentration of O2, then effectively there's going to be more O2 molecules. That means the collision frequency between the O2 and the CO will increase. And as we know, the increase in collision theory, um, the increase in collision number will, of course, result in more successful collisions, which in turn will cause a faster reaction. OK, so something along these lines, right? You can see the answers QCAA have given, and it's pretty much the same thing as I said. <clears throat> Balance equation to describe how PTFE is produced from its monomer. Well, you need to know, obviously, that PTFE is polytetrafluoroethene, which in turn come, comes from tetrafluoroethene. The double bond breaks. That allows the single bond there and then a single bond to form either side. So this then is the repeating unit for the monomer, which we show with a little n outside the square brackets. Hopefully this is uh, something you've um, got used to doing many, many times. It's an addition polymer, of course, because it's an alkene and there is no other product, unlike condensation polymers, which produce a second product, usually water. <clears throat> uh, and again, what it says is it wants you to say the double bond is broken to allow the monomers to join. Okay, straightforward. Again, it's pretty obvious the two marks, you know, what they're going to be for. One mark for addition polymer, one mark for saying, obviously, why. Okay, we have a fuel cell. This is an acidic fuel cell. Remember, there's also alkaline fuel cells. You need to know both. All the equations are in the data book on the electrochemical series page. So have that handy when you do any questions like this. So as regards the anode and cathode half reactions, these are obtained directly from the chemistry data book. I think it's page 10, but you'll see those equations are there. Okay. Obviously, the hydrogen, hydrogen ion one is the standard. That would have a value of zero. And then you'll find this one, obviously, also in that chart. Um, remember, anodes are always are sites of oxidation, so electrons are being lost. Cathodes are always where reduction takes place. Electrons are being gained. All right, so in the list, you'll see this equation as it is in that order. But this equation, you will have to reverse because they're all written, as you know, as reductions. Um, of course, when the hydrogen and oxygen join together, the product is water. Compare the movement of electrons and hydrogen ions in the fuel cell. Okay, well, at the anode, we are producing electrons. Those electrons will travel through this wire to the cathode, where they will be received by the oxygen molecules in the presence of the hydrogen ions from the proton exchange membrane. So as electrons go one way, then obviously hydrogen ions um, will travel also, and I'm just looking at that, hydrogen ions will also travel from anode to cathode through that membrane. Okay. Now, what they want you to say here, compare the movement of electrons. Um, so electrons and hydrogen ions both move from anode towards cathode. Okay. Pretty straightforward stuff. The difference, of course, would mean that the electrons go through the wire 
whereas of course the hydrogen ions can't travel through a, a metal they will travel through this um, this membrane here which is some sort of electrolyte probably an acid like phosphoric acid i would imagine would be used as the sort of membrane that allows the hydrogen ions to travel uh, the significance so the significance of all of this is basically the flow of electrons will create a potential difference or a voltage between the anode and the cathode it's it's a galvanic cell of course just like um, you've done in the unit on redox uh, this is producing electricity unlike electrolysis which is consuming it okay question 24 r and q are unknown transition metals from period four so the transition metals from period four which of course you will have the periodic table so you'll be able to identify them from that and then r and q were put together one time as the cathode and anode in one direction and in the other one is another direction you can see that the positive sign here tells you that q should be the cathode and r should be the anode if you do it the other way around you get a negative value and that's telling you basically it's the wrong way around so identify the identity of metals r and q so it says up here basically r will displace zinc copper and silver but not magnesium so r is basically more reactive than zinc and copper and silver but less reactive than magnesium now if you go into your data book i'm going to use mine here while i'm talking to you you'll find that r would have to be either aluminium or manganese have your data book please so you can see what i'm saying okay however we are told in that first line it's a transition metal and therefore it has to be manganese and not aluminium and then it says um second experiment determine the identities of r and q so we've identified r we know it's manganese we therefore know it has a value uh, according to the electrochemical series as written of minus 1.18 okay now we will need now to do a little bit of maths we know that the overall cell is 0 0.94 i don't particularly like the way the qca have done it i think it's a bit misleading so what i've done here basically is e cell which is 0 0.94 okay there equals the standard electropotential of the reduction reaction okay now the reduction reaction will be q's reaction so we're going to put an x there because we're trying to find that and then we subtract from that the electrode potential of the oxidation reaction which remember is manganese and if it's an oxidation the minus 1.18 will of course change to a plus in this equation minus minus means it becomes a plus if you now do the maths rearranging x would equal 0 0.94 minus 1.18 the plus becomes a minus and that will give you a value of minus 0 0.24 if you now go back to your electrochemical series you'll find that that corresponds to nickel okay so all good question 25 we have the contact process for making sulfuric acid and reactions one and two are used you will notice that the catalyst which is vanadium oxide is used in reaction one and regenerated in reaction two which of course means it's a catalyst okay the overall reaction as you can see then is that the v2o4 cancels on both sides and V2O5 is simply a catalyst. It is unused. Sorry, that's not correct. It is used, but then re reformed at the end. So it's not used up in the process. 
Oxidation state, oxygen, of course, would be minus 2. Four of them would be minus 8. Divide by 2, each vanadium would be plus 4. Is it reacting as an ox oxidizing agent or reducing agent in reaction 1? Well, you can see it's going to be plus 5 there. It's plus 4 there. So it's decreasing its oxidation number, meaning it's being reduced. This, of course, turns it into an oxidizing agent. And you can see the SO2 becomes SO3. So in simple terms, it's been oxidized. Um, and why is a catalyst? We've already said this. Because basically, whatever it becomes in reaction one, it is turned back in reaction two into its original form. And therefore, it's classed as a catalyst because it's chemically unchanged at the end. Okay, table shows a series of reactions performed. Now, these are your reaction pathways. Uh, reaction one, the reactant is propanol. It's, it's reacted with sulfuric acid and heat. That is really, really bad that they shouldn't have given you that one because it's not one of the reaction pathways. The alkene, which would be propene, compound A, to propanol is one of the pathways that they stipulate, but the reverse reaction, the dehydration reaction, is not syllabus. So that, again, is very naughty, and that, of course, will throw a lot of students. Anyway, let's proceed. Uh, compound A, now remember, is propene, okay, and that will now react with H2O heat to make propanol. But you go, what? That is already propanol. Well, what they should have done, basically, is said, this is propan-1-ol, and when you then turn propene into propanol, of course, the OH could go on either carbon of the double bond, which means it could produce not just propan 1-ol, which this should have, it should have a 1, but it could also produce propan 2-ol, and that's compound B. And compound B, of course, is a secondary alcohol, which when you oxidize it, will produce a ketone. The primary alcohol would have produced an aldehyde. Okay, so propene, um, one's a secondary, one's a primary alcohol. We've already covered that. And the structural formula of compound C then would be propanone, which of course is that. Okay, the observation you'd expect, manganate, remember, is a purple reducing, uh, purple, purple oxidizing agent, a purple reagent, I was trying to say. And when it reacts, it becomes the manganese 2 plus ion, which is a very pale pink. So effectively, you would see it become lighter. Okay, I'm going to have to stop there because my time is running out. So I'll continue this in just a moment.